What's up, Rockstar Engineers, and welcome back to the NextGenT YouTube channel. I'm Rob Riker, your instructor and mentor here at NextGenT. In this video, we're going to cover the value of the CCIE and how NextGenT Zero to Engineer program can get you started. All right, let's dive in. So if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering what certifications would look best on your resume, where you should spend your time, and how to climb up in the industry. Yeah, we all have those questions, right? But where should you start? Can you dive right in and start studying for the CCIE right now? I had that question when I first started studying for the CCIE. I would hear the question and the comment and things like, it's really, really, really hard to get. Is it really worth it. It takes so much time to acquire. And the answer to it, to be honest with you, is it's absolutely worth it. You know, having been through the process myself, I can tell you firsthand that it's 100% worth the time and effort. You get one of these cool plaques when you finally do pass the, the lab exam. So if you've got multiple CCIEs, you get multiple plaques. This one just happens to be for the riding and switching track. So when we talk about value, that's just one piece of it, right? But in order to understand the full value of the CCIE, we need to really understand what CCIE is. So let's define that first. CCIE stands for Cisco Certified Inter-Network Expert. So it's Cisco Systems Top Technical Implementation Certification. Now, there are other expert level certifications out there as well as CCDE and CCAR, but those are design and architect certifications, not technical implementation and troubleshooting exams like CCIE. So the cool thing about it is it's a technical career certification and it's offered by Cisco. So therefore, you, for those of you that have gone after CCNA or CCMP or if that's in your game plan to go achieve, you go attack CCNA and CCMP first and then you get your CCIE after that. The big differentiator between CCNA and CCMP and CCIE is that CCNA and CCMP are written exams. I mean, you go to a Pearson View location, you do the clickety click stuff and then boom, you get your results right away. In CCIE, it's not a written exam, it's 100% lab based. So there are no multiple choice questions. You've got to know how to get things working. So if you're in the US, you go to a place in Texas, Richardson, Texas specifically, just outside of Dallas, and you take the exam. The exam is eight hours long. And after you've done the eight hour exam, then you will usually get your results within about 48 hours after you've taken the test. So the results are not instant. So for those of you that have taken a CCNA or a CCMP and you're used to seeing that, congratulations, you've passed, or unfortunately we were to inform you, you failed, you failed to meet the minimum requirements or whatever the, the verbiage is. CCIE doesn't give you that warm, fuzzy feeling when you're done. You're, you walk out of there, you kind of know whether or not you passed. I knew on my third attempt at the CCA lab in 2015, I walked out of there knowing that I had passed. It was just waiting for Cisco to go through their process and give me the, the thumbs up and eventually give me my number. Where in CCNA and CCMP, you get your results right away. Now your results do come in via notification via email. So you get an email from CCIE at Cisco.com and then you have to click the little URL in the email and that redirects you to the portal that you authenticate to. And then in really small letters, you get the pass or fail and then you can get your score report. Your CCA number's in there, I like, I like this stuff. So it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. I remember getting that email. It was October 20th, 2015, at about quarter to two in the morning. I we literally just got back from the airport because I flew from North Carolina back to Milwaukee. And I remember opening that email up and I ran through the house like a chicken with my head cut off. I was so stoked, but I had taken an exorbitant amount of time to earn it. Three attempts and nearly $10,000 to to, to earn the CCIE. So it's absolutely something that you have to be 100% all in. It's not something you can be even remotely like, I'm not really sure. So specifically, it's not something you wake up one day and just declare you're gonna go after. It's definitely a long-term commitment. So a very large portion of a extended year plan. So some people have the intention of doing it in four years. Some people wanna do it in 10 years. I was kind of gung-ho on it. I got into a group of engineers, a study group, and a lot of those guys were really motivated and their motivation motivated me. So I put 
everything else on the back burner and I just went after it. One of the things that I had to do when I went after it was I had to communicate to my wife and my family that I was gonna go attack it because this is something where there were several occasions where I stayed home. You know, they would go out of town for the weekend to give me quiet time and I would study the entire weekend. So from the time I woke up, you know, Friday evening until some early time in the morning, three, four, five in the morning, all day Saturday and all day Sunday, I was studying. But what that did is, is it ramped up my learning process and made it very, very easy for me to understand stuff. And the job, you know, the network engineering jobs that I was doing, the consulting projects I was working on, they became really, really easy to execute because I was always leveling up my understanding. I was always taking my technical expertise to the next level week after week after week. On average, it takes about a year to two in order to prepare for the CCIE. So I started July 31st of 2014. I passed the CCIE written exam, which is now no longer uh, an actual test you take. It's now a the, the new CCMP core exams for the particular track you're in, that's your new written exam. Now, having been through the process myself, and I can speak from firsthand experience, that you really need a CCNP in order to kick off CCIE. Now, you can do CCIE without any prereqs, so you can do, you can jump right off and dive right into CCIE, but you really need a CCNP level of understanding, both to theory and implementation, in order to be successful with CCIE. So CCP is definitely a good foundation. For those that are thinking about pursuing it, it's not about the destination, it's all about the journey. Because one of the things that I found when I was first starting to study for it, I would watch other CCIs work and I'd be like, wow, I want to be like that guy or that girl and be that well-versed in that particular technology. The cool thing is once you pass it, it's a huge milestone. I remember getting a lot of praise and recognition, you know, congratulations, you passed. LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube all blew up, right? It was all congratulations for those that understood the time and the commitment. The value of the CCA comes from lots and lots of time spent labbing up the different capabilities and things like that. If you just go in, just read the technologies and you understand the theory and stuff like that, that on its own is not enough to pass the lab exam. You have to actually implement a number of capabilities. So the lab exam makes you prove that you can implement the, the tasks and get everything up and running. So having a CCIE is a big differentiator as well though. So now that we understand more or less the, the behind the scenes and you know kind of the, the one, two, three steps in order to get started, why is CCIE such a big deal? So, or why do I feel like it's such a big deal? Um, a lot of other CCIEs I know think about it the same way. So one of the things that it does enable you is to be way more competitive in the job market. So I've gone from CCMP to CCIE and my salary dramatically increased. And also the roles also increased. So I went from just being a network engineer to a senior engineer. I was also a solutions architect and a network architect. What's the difference between those two? Not a whole lot. Network architects are more focused on the operations and getting things to work a certain way, where solutions architects are trying to integrate with other things, maybe green, elevating a brownfield environment, things like that. Now, according to ZipRecruiter, the average CCA salary is about $150,000 a year. So you have a, just about a, you understand where about you can fit into it. And that's, you're not guaranteed that, that's just the average. Some people make way more, than, than that. So depending on the market, depending on the part of the country you live in, uh, speaking for those of you that are here based in the US, that's basically where that comes from. Having the knowledge and the cert on your resume definitely does make you more desirable. And the cool thing about it is the reason why you're so desirable is because there's only 60 to 66,000 of us out there. So for the past six months or so, the time of this recording, you can't take a CCA lab. So from March until September, the CCA labs were shut down. And they're just now starting to open back up. So no one's been able to pass the CCA lab since March when they closed down the, the labs. And that's all lab locations. So those, I know people that were planning on taking the CCA lab and they're like, uh, it is what it is. With that being said, now we have to understand what steps should you take if you're new. So if you're new to IT, there's a few steps you should take before considering CCIE. So you can add it to your long-term goals for, for preparing for CCIE, 
but you really need a structured approach to attack it. So again, I'm gonna go back to what I talked about earlier. Just about everyone uses CCNA and CCMP to prepare for CCIE. It's very much a crawl, walk, run approach. You crawl in CCNA, you walk in CCMP, and then you can run in CCIE. Now the reality of it is you will crawl, walk, run at each level because there will be new information that's given to you. You have to learn a new topic or a new feature. Things like that are gonna happen, right? So you can't get away from that. But anything you've already gone over, let's say you're taking OSPF a little bit deeper, you're taking BGP a little bit deeper, you know, you're gonna be that much, you're, it's gonna be that much faster for you to work through those particular topics because you're gonna be that much more familiar with them. So as you progress from NA to NP to IE, you become more and more familiar with the topics. So this includes the theory, the implementation, advanced features, troubleshooting, mastery, so on and so forth. You will cover the same topic several times. So and the more times you cover it, the more comfortable you become with it, right? So just like riding a bike or preparing your favorite meal. By the time the process is nearly over, you will be so well versed in several topics that you will be able to walk into the lab exam and you'll be very comfortable with the tasks that are being handed to you. Some will be absolutely no brainers. You'll just go in there and you'll crush it. Others will be like, hmm, I remember a couple of tasks in all three of my lab attempts where I had to sit back and I had to draw something out and understand each one of the lines of the task. And you have to, I had to play around with some variables. I had to adjust some stuff here and some stuff there. I don't want to give too much away, but that was some of the stuff that you had to do. Sometimes you had to might edit and massage your configuration in order to meet the desired results. Now, the cool thing is once you've met the results, you're in good shape. So let me give you an example. So if you have four tasks that you need to configure for one particular section, you have to get all four tasks working in order to receive the points for that particular section. There is no partial credit. So it's either all for one or none at all, right? When you do go through your exam and you run into problems, there is documentation available to you. The lab is actually an open book test and you can look up any configuration you need to as long as it's a configuration guide and not like a example of something or a tech note that's written for a specific use case. It is slow and not intended for use throughout the exam. So you definitely have to know how to manually navigate to the documentation. There is no Google light like, search feature, so you're out of luck there. You can use find. So like if you're on a Windows box, control F and then you can type in whatever it is you're looking for and find that particular feature. The thing about the lab itself is it's all about speed and there's interpretation that needs to be used as you're going through the different tasks. So you gain speed by spending hundreds of hours labbing this stuff up and playing with it. And then you're able to interpret what you're being tasked to configure, having labbed and tested everything out. So some tasks are easier than others. Some tasks are more complicated, as we already mentioned. Now, when it comes to figuring out whether you've got it right or not, there are verification outputs. So for example, a particular task might have those same four tasks again, again you go through and you look at the, the verification. As long as your output matches theirs, you're in good shape. There might be other ones where you need to match something like a particular destination. You need to be able to reach uh, network X, for example. And there's in the verification output, you need to go via 10111 and 10112. So if you're trying to get to a particular destination and you see 10.1.1.1 and 10.1.2.1 in the verification output, if you do a trace route, for example, to that particular destination and you see 10.1.1.1 show up first and then 10.1.2.1 show up second, that's 100% okay. As long as both show up in the output, you're in good shape. That's basically where that comes from. They're, not everything is 100% controllable and you need to know that. So the way that the forwarding engine works and the way the control plane works, the control plane directs the forwarding engine on the routers to do what they're supposed to do. So as long as your outputs match what they're looking for, you're in good shape. So if you're at the beginning of your IT career and planning your crawl, walk, or run approach, we do have an option for you through the NextGen T Zero to Engineer or ZTE program, where we teach real world skills through hands-on training and help people like yourself level up in IT or cybersecurity in just a few months. This program will help you build a strong foundation that goes beyond just a few entry-level certs on your resume. So the ZTE program begins with basic training with FSNA, building the foundation of networking. 
So you start off with that, learning some basics of networking, get everything up and running, get some wins and victories under your belt. Then you transition into CCNA, where we go through and we help you step by step through the CCNA certification process. Then when you pass your CCNA, you can dive into the advanced training portion. You get to hang out with me, where we focus on FSP. We're more project focused at this point because you're a little bit more advanced, you know some more stuff. You go through advanced training with me, you go through the projects, and then you end up rolling out the full stack network professional certification and the SQC. By the time you're all set up and done with that, you're in a really good spot to begin diving into your CCMP, which again is a good starting point for CCIE. So don't forget that you need to have a CCMP before you attack CCIE. You can't just dive right in because you'll sit there for two years before you get there. If you've learned something new from this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'm Rob Riker, instructor and mentor. Thanks for watching. Do you know what time it is? It's time to level up and become a rock star engineer. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks everybody. Jacob Hess here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you, if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our IT engineer training programs at www.zerotoengineer.com.